Welcome to our training on advocating for privacy. My name is Juliana Cotto and I'm a policy fellow for the Youth and Education Privacy at the Future of Privacy Forum. The objectives of this module are to one, learn what it means to have a culture of privacy in your school, and two, learn ways you can advocate for a culture of privacy at your school. With everything you as a teacher, school admin and staff, students and families have to manage and balance, including the changes in how education is delivered, be it online or hybrid, it can be extremely difficult to prioritize privacy. School districts are struggling to ensure all families have internet connectivity and access to a device, and teachers are working hard to make sure students are present. It's important to remember and be able to connect how student privacy is directly related to our ability to offer students a strong and safe education. When advocating for privacy, the ultimate goal is to cultivate a culture of privacy. This means that within a school, everyone who has access to students' personal information is trained and know why and how to effectively and ethically collect, use, share, protect, and secure it. It also means everyone understands they have a role in building a culture of privacy within schools. So this means administrators, educators, students, and parents. We have some quotes from district and school leaders to illustrate what it looks like to have a culture of privacy in your school. Dana says this means when teachers are introduced to new resources, they initially ask questions about data privacy. So what does this resource collect? How is that data being shared? And why do we choose this resource over a different one in terms of data privacy? For Allen, it means that kids have the awareness to ask questions when required to use new software. So for example, this piece of software is asking me for my birth date. Why do they need my birth date or my social security number or my phone number? I'm not doing anything here that would need my phone number, so why do they need it? Steve Smith also alluded to teachers having conversations around the privacy concerns of the apps, not just getting excited about being able to use new tools. It's also important to note that building a culture of privacy does take time. For Steve's district, it took three to four years, but again, this is because it is striving to get everyone in the school community, administration, teachers, parents, and students to understand their role, and this takes time. And pushing for a culture of privacy at your school, it might be helpful to think about it in terms of actions you can take in your role as a teacher and actions you can take in your role as an advocate. As a teacher, you should be following best practices in protecting student data which includes focusing on the best interests of students, controlling and limiting data, incorporating privacy by design, limiting data sharing, using useful transparency, and empowering students as digital leaders. We go into further detail in our other module called How to Protect Student Data, which will be listed in the resource section. As an advocate, you can work to empower students and parents and push for new or better processes, trainings, and norms. When advocating for a culture of privacy, it's important to know what doesn't work. Having strict punitive repercussions for not complying with rules without an understanding of why certain protections are in place, leave people with little reason for genuine buy-in or feeling as though these rules are only in place to enforce rather than help. An hour long training on laws is a start, but privacy is not a one and done training. Trainings that happen once a year don't tend to stick and can be quickly forgotten. Lastly, there are common misconceptions about privacy. People tend to think privacy is about having something to hide or in order to prevent identity theft. Privacy is much, much more than that. It's about rights and autonomy. Now that we've discussed what doesn't work, let's get into ways you can advocate. Advocating for cultural privacy in your classroom looks like intertwining digital citizenship lessons into your curriculum so that you're empowering students as digital leaders and teaching them how to protect their own data privacy. It's also equipping parents with the knowledge and tools they need to join in the cultivation of a culture of privacy. And it's incorporating useful transparency on the technologies that are being used in your classroom and what data is being collected. With other teachers, this looks like sharing digital citizenship lessons that they can incorporate in their day-to-day, -day, 
It also includes sharing stories with them that illustrate the importance of protecting students' privacy and how things can go wrong. These are incredibly powerful in building buy-in and ultimately finding allies. With your school administrators, advocate for your school to continuously build and improve its privacy program. They should have a formalized vetting process in place that vets EdTech for privacy and security. Advocate for proper training to all employees and to have transparent, updated, and accessible communication. With their school administrators, also advocate for a staff member where part of their duties is to develop and implement data privacy and security policies and practices. Advocate for your school administrators to have up-to-date policies and regulations that address privacy compliance requirements. And finally, advocate for adequate resources to meet the data privacy and security needs of your school. And finally, advocating to policymakers. Again, share stories with local legislators. They may not be considering student privacy amidst all the competing priorities or understand how it is connected. Your school may also lack the funds it needs to really foster a culture of privacy. Request for more resources from your school board. And lastly, join organizations who are already doing the work and have resources and sample policies to share with you. We'd like to end this module by asking you to complete an activity. One, what are ways you can advocate for a culture of privacy with each of the following stakeholders? Students, parents, peers, and administrators. And second, what are some ways you can influence privacy policies and practices at your school? Thank you for joining this training.